appreciate that. Well, as we said, the markets did take a little bit of a, uh, a slide back on those headlines earlier. Joining us to talk about it on our Closing Bell Exchange today, we have Paul Diedrich from Fairfax Global Markets, Steve Grasso from Stuart Frankel here on the floor, and our own Rick Santelli at the CME in Chicago. Uh, guys, good to see you all. Steve, um, we have again this, this story that's been unfolding for a while, not specifically North Korea, but that even when we get adverse headlines, the market finds a way to kind of rotate. Off you know generally kind of stay supported near these these record highs today maybe a little bit of a of a fumbling of the baton i mean you have energy up but the banks and techs both down so where does that leave us with the overall yeah, market? i think you you've seen this big tech sell big tech sell risk on sell the growthy names that have been doing so well you have to remember mike you better than anyone knows this end of september you have the quarterly rebalance you have the monthly rebalance so a lot of this is sell what's worked by what hasn't worked, and we haven't yet seen the rotation, to your point, take hold for anything longer than one or two or three different sessions. This is a big month for energy, and I think it could last a little bit longer, at least until the end of September. I think you're gonna see this rotation of selling the large cap tech yeah, I think S&P Energy's up like 10% in a month. So yeah, oh, it's had a, a dramatic we, Interestingly, that's partly because of the low dollar, so even today, I mean, you see it up half a point, Paul. Yep. Um, you know, we're getting a flight to safety move, but is the overriding story still that it's been so weak and it's supporting some of these markets? I, I think we're going to see a, a more sustained sector rotation, partially because of the tax reform that's coming. Uh, the tax reform is going to reprice, revalue, and change the price earnings ratios of almost every publicly you traded company. You seem pretty convinced it's coming. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think most people think that it is, and they've, they've worked out a way that they can do it with just 51, uh, 51 votes, uh, just Republicans. So you think to it's going to make this. a huge impact just to drop the rate to 20, or what do you, what do you yes, mean when you uh, say it could well, boost the, earnings that much? The, it's going to change with every company. The, the rate is 35% and it's going down to 20, but not every company pays 20% uh, tax rates today. Microsoft, IBM, 5 to 8% because with corporate tax loopholes and with um, being able to park money overseas and not pay taxes on it, global companies are going to be paying more in taxes and they're going to get a hit to earnings, whereas you'd be surprised how many companies actually do pay the 35%, but they're all companies where almost all the revenues come in the United States. And They're those going to be the getting a massive so, benefit. And you brought some of those names. I mean, it's everybody from Altria to Verizon. You say Dollar General, Comcast, our parent company, Kraft. Home Depot, you know, all of these companies. And if you think about it, they're going to get a 15% tax on their revenues is going to go directly to earnings. If you look at the S&P overall, FactSet says that the forward P.E. earnings today are 17.7. If you take in the tax cut numbers, the market is going to drop to 15.9. Oh, that, 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 that assumes, though, that the companies producing the largest volume of ag aggregate profits are the ones that are at the 35. I mean, I don't think it's no, going to go across the no, board. No, no, this is based on the average no, I know. tax rate. But the, which is but like the average isn't going to move the same based on lower tax domestic companies. No, but, but we, in as investors, we kind of look at the valuation yeah. of the market. I mean, all the people who come on here and say the market's way overvalued, you get that tax, uh, that PE yeah. rate down to 15.7, and it's going to look very much like the last five year average and not overvalued at all. All right. Rickster, what about you? Again, it, we were at you know, a day, a session where it's absolutely showing those flight to safety characteristics. Uh, you know, what, is that just going to be the overriding factor for a time? I think it could be, especially, you know, my opinion is that the markets are treading water here. You know, we're post some of the big central bank meetings. We're kind of in between. Uh, I think uh, we're very comfortable close to that two and a quarter level in tens. We gave up several basis points today. It was very hard to argue with the fact that it was driven by North Korean headlines. Uh, probably some computer trade mixed in. I understand there's an effect. But I think the real issue there is it's not the real main strategy. And I don't think many investors uh, are going to anticipate that this is going to be the crux of their trading going forward. They deal with it. It's, it's kind of a passive form of the trade. I'm very optimistic on the active form, but I do think we're in this period where it's going to be a bit difficult. And as for the dollar index, 
You know, yes, it's had a bit of a rally, but we also did have German elections. And unlike August, uh, excuse me, November 8th, their elections obviously didn't have nearly as big an impact as the United States elections in November. But the euro looks to be closing at the lowest level on the greenback since the 24th of August. We could say that's flight to safety on the dollar. But if you look back over the last several months, it really isn't the dollar index. It seems to be the most buoyant currency against North Korea. So I would think that at least some of that channel is probably due to the uh, nature of the German elections and the status quo that may remain. Rick, Rick, you mentioned, you know, markets treading water certainly is, uh, has been the case for a while. If we have now a market, though, where Fed meetings seem not to be much of a market mover, jobs numbers have not really been much of a market mover, what do you think the bond market, the foreign currency markets are waiting for as a potential catalyst? Oh, no, I don't disagree with that. I, I disagree with that a lot. I think it is all about central banking, and it is all about the calibration of that which shows up in foreign exchange, and it's all about exports. It's, it's going to be the yen versus uh, the euro with regard to auto industry issues between Germany and Japan. These issues are out there, and they're, in my opinion, going to get worse. We still have lots of capacity around the globe, and I think uh, many countries are vying for, you know, the best place in line to do their exports, and I continue to see that dynamic showing up. I think the energy is a big positive. I, I think that'll give a little bit more backbone to the equity markets moving forward as well. Steve, as we look back to the session, Dow's down 63. We were down about 130, I think, on the low. So we're coming back. But names like Facebook, Netflix are still down big uh, this afternoon. What do you make of that? Huge weight on the overall market. And, you know, when you look at what, you, what happened with Apple and you see the performance in Apple coming off of their event, and then you say, well, that's normally what happens with Apple. And then if you juxtapose it with Facebook, the whole sector, the whole space is really taking a hit. There's no one that's, uh, you know, burying the flag right now saying, I want to buy large cap tech. You want to take profits there. You want to take profits. You want to buy energy. But short term profits? To, I mean, are, yeah, it's, are, it's, are, all, are you, it's all short term. Yeah. I don't I don't see this thing playing out into year end. I see it playing out into October. So I don't see it being a big mess. But if you look at what Rick said, the 10 year, you could see at the end of the month, you could see money coming back into the 10 year, coming out of equities, going back into the 10 year, and buying the dollar because these, these are things that we haven't seen. What were you shaking your head about? Every analyst I know is looking at this, how the tax reform is going to affect, especially the big tech uh, companies. Amazon will actually benefit, but almost all the other ones are going to pay higher taxes. And I think that this is a long term sector rotation out of these these global companies global tech and that you're going to see more and more of it especially the only problem with that is yeah. the passive investing there's so many etfs there's so many funds now apple is owned and you know check the numbers but 40 50 60 different etfs so that creates a buying frenzy unto itself so it's hard to get really excited about an exxon mobile longer than a month or two yeah but it's the institutional investors that are still and driving they all the own individual. those though they all own but they're those moving too. out i think into oh. yeah, the analyst at all the major sure. brokerage firms are looking at this and they're starting to move out and into u.s centric stocks well so far it's it's large into small today growth into value russell 2000 is actually green on the day maybe it's the start of something paul steve uh, and rick thank you very much thank and you. we have just about